Hey, what is going on, Keep Users? Greg Jenkins here from House Monkey Pod. If you have tracked down this video or you are taking the time to watch this video, it's probably because you have been dealing with web form spam. Spam contacts, filling out your web forms, winding up in your database, taking up space, bandwidth, focus that you don't want to be affording those junk contacts. And there's a bunch of reasons why this happens. None of them super important, all of them super annoying. But the solution is a tool called Spam Kill that solves it by stopping those spam submissions completely. I implemented Spam Kill just a few months ago and haven't had a single spam contact opt in since then. Um, I say this because before implementing spam kill, I did try the other options. You can do a, a hidden field, and if people, if the bots submit that, you filter them out. You can do um, like a, a, a math equation where they have to type in a specific answer, but that puts the responsibility on the humans filling out your forms. Um, and all of those have their own drawbacks. Far and away, the most reliable solution is spam kill. In fact, if you hop into any of the keep user groups on Facebook, and you search for web form spam or spam contacts, you will see a avalanche of recommendations for spam kill from people who have found it, have bought it, have applied it, and are currently experiencing the results. Now, this video is gonna show you exactly how to get set up on spam kill, courtesy of a demo from Keep Partner and personal friend of mine, Mr. Mark Penny down at Mepi. So if you want help with this, you can reach out to him directly uh, mepi.com forward slash help, or you could email him help at mepi.com um, and Mark will get you sorted. But first, check out this demo and see if it's something that you can solve for yourself. You'll be glad that you did. Hey, Grovers, just wanted to do a quick video to show you how to use Spam Kill to protect your uh, keep web forms from spam bot entries. Uh, it's a little bit of an extra step you have to go through to uh, take your web form, put it through spam kill, and then get it on your website. So I just want to quickly run through that. I've got a longer form video that explains everything from why we need it to how it works um, and, and you know some tips and tricks that's being worked on at the moment. But I just want to do this quick video to help you guys out for setting this up. So let's say we've already got the original form um, on the website, right? And so it looks something like this. We've not done any styling. Um, this is just an embedded form. If uh, somebody comes along, enters in, goes straight into your keep campaign. So that's great. So it's a, a campaign or advanced automation web form. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we locate that. Fine, we found it. Then we want to duplicate it. So the reason for that is that it, the bots can find the form if you leave it inside keep. So they can bypass your website, go straight to the form. So we'll just duplicate that. As I said, this is a quick run through. I'm not going to explain too much about the details, but I just wanted to have a, a quick tutorial that shows you how to, to go from the web form to getting it on the website and even a little bit of styling. So we've cloned it. Um, that's cool. So the next thing we want to do is click next and we want to disable recapture. So if we go into the original one, we'll actually rename that in a second and we go into settings and we just need to tick this box here to disable recapture. Um, it does, that's not compatible with spam kill and we'll talk about that in a longer video that I'm going to do. Uh, and we'll call this the spam kill opt-in form. Awesome. So we've got that and then we want to make it um, ready. Uh, and one of the instructions say save and publish. All right, so we've made it, we've saved it basically by making it ready. So let's hit publish. We'll publish that baby. So now we've got the spam kill opt-in form. What's next? Click on next. Now it's asking for us to copy the HTML. Now it's very important that you copy the, not the JavaScript and not the styled HTML, but the unstyled HTML. So we go to the code, HTML cut unstyled. We'll copy that and then we'll go into here and we paste that code in there and then we hit generate and it automatically figures out what the, the email field was. And then it creates this new version of the form that's got all this gobbledygook in it. Don't worry about it. It's just how it all works. Um, copy that. And then we need to go to our website and we'll delete the, the web form that we had, just the keep form, and we'll put in the new one. Now it looks uh, kind of confusing, but it is just a form, so you don't need to worry too much. So we'll click update. 
Uh, and then we'll go to here and we'll refresh and bada bang, bada boom. It looks exactly the same, except now it's being protected by spam kill. Um, so that's pretty much all you need to do. Um, the extra little bit of code down here, I actually recommend that. That just lets you, um, if somebody mistypes their email address, they just type gmail instead of gmail.com or, you know, a variation that's just a typo. Uh, it'll pick up on a lot of those and it'll give them a suggestion. So a quick and easy way to do that is just put that in another WordPress HTML. Whoops. Go back there and we'll copy. It's just to put that into another HTML box on the same page and we'll update that. And I'll give you a very quick demo of that. So if I typed in mark at gmail.com and hit tab, it's going to suggest that you mean that and if you click on that it'll replace it for you so that's a good way of uh stopping people accidentally entering the wrong email addresses so um recommend you use it you don't have to it's totally up to you uh now if you've got a web developer that's doing styling or you've got javascript or anything like that that targets the form fields then you may need to copy down these names um, i recommend just copying them putting them into a, a sheet or something so you've got a record of it that's just renaming it so if you're targeting in field first name you need to target this name it's a bit weird looking but um, it's what needs to happen so that you can do things like scripting and css um, however if uh, you I, I do styling of my site of my forms using css on and i'm going to show you that now so if i just added some of my standard styling we update that and that's not targeting these field names or anything like that it's just doing standard styling of forms so this is something any web developer should be able to do without any problems um, if we refresh that you'll see that the styling looks way better boom look at that and you click on things everything looks great hover yep so this is the styling that i chose you, your web developer can style it to the match to your website um, so that's the quick and dirty rundown of how to take your web form from keep put it through spam kill and get it on your website now the last thing you need to do is to turn off this once that's working and you've tested it you need to turn off your original opt-in form so that the bots can't find it so we turn that off here we mark it at, i would recommend deleting it i'm not going to because i'm using this as a demo um, but you, if you turn it off if it mark it unready and publish that will do the same job so it's no longer available for bots to access so now all the opt-ins will come through the spam kill form through spam kill, which protect you from those bots. Anyway, that's the quick rundown. Um, I went very fast. Uh, hopefully it's uh, useful. If you've got any questions, let me know. Cheers. Okay, so that is spam kill. Shout out to Mihir, the developer behind this incredibly powerful and reliable tool. He has taken a frustrating scenario for a lot of small business owners and provided a simple and elegant solution that allows you to just stop those entirely. Um, Mark's demo here makes it seem fairly accessible, so hopefully you have exactly what you need in order to implement this for your own business. But if you do not, um, or if you want some expert guidance, or if you want Mark's help with the CSS code that makes your web form look better, reach out to Mark. Uh, he's terrific and can help you get this implemented for your business. Mepi.com forward slash help, or you can email him help at mepi.com. Uh, thanks to Mark for taking the time to record this demo for the OG members and for permitting me to share it more publicly with anyone else that it can serve. Thanks for watching. Take care.